Hey, everybody, good evening. It is Ivan. We are here online at Facebook with Jatai International, extension of Jatai Academy here on the social network. We're here in the barbershop tonight. We're waiting on our model. He'll be here any minute. In the meantime, we're going to set things up and get you ready for another great educational experience. You've come to rely on Jatai Academy and Jatai International for fabulous education and it continues. I've been seeing, I hope you've been seeing, some terrific posts recently from members of the Jatai educational community with lots of great quality education. It's such an exciting time. We've got one big trade show coming up this weekend uh, in Las Vegas, IBS. Uh, the International Beauty Show in Las Vegas is coming up this weekend. We just got done with BarberCon. We were talking Jatai and Feather Razors at BarberCon. Uh, before that, we were all in Orlando for the biggest, one of the biggest shows of the year. So, a lot of great stuff going on in haircut world. Lots of new exciting things happening. So, let's take a look at what we got tonight. Um, as always, as has become a tradition, and you'll notice I've got the nice crispy barber jacket on because we're in the barber shop, summertime, so barber jacket with shorts, kind of a weird setup or a weird look, but hey, welcome to summer. We always kick it off with $100,000 hair cutter. You wanna be a $100,000 hair cutter, I wanna help you. You know, $100,000 hair cutter, for some people, it's a hope and a wish and a dream, and for other people, it's simply a stepping stone on the way to much bigger, bigger numbers. So wherever you are in the business, at whatever level you're at, I want to help you make it the next jump up. So let's take a look. Today is June 11. So we're going to take a look at June 11 in the $100,000 hair cutter book. That is the way it works, by the way. It's one idea a day, every single day, for 365 days of crazy education. You wake up in the morning, you turn to today, and you read today, today. June 11, that's day 162, with 203 days remaining in the year. So we're not quite at the halfway point in the year. And today's idea, suggestion, business building tip, if you will, is about targeting seniors. And I think it's great that we're here in a classic barbershop, Mike's Barbershop, where I cut hair part-time when I'm not on the road, because we do have a very large senior citizen clientele. A good portion, I would guess, better than half our traffic is seniors. Part of it is a reflection of the community in which we exist. Part of it is the nature of a classic barber shop. But when we talk about targeting seniors, there's some things to think about. You know, the greatest generation and the baby boom generation, uh, these folks are turning into seniors. At, well, the, the greatest generation, those guys are all seniors for a while. Uh, the baby boom generation, we, because I'm part of that group, we're turning into senior citizens by the thousands every single day. It is a growing market. And an important thing to remember is, I think the statistic is 85% of the wealth in America is in the possession of people over the age of 65. The seniors, they've got all the money. So you know what? Couple things when we talk about targeting seniors. Be senior friendly, whether it is senior hours or um, price menus in large print so people can see. Be conscious of maybe the tunes that you play on the radio so they're appropriate for that senior audience. That can be very important as well. Um, what else for seniors? Couple of big things. Oh, by the way, no senior discounts. I'll say it again. No senior discounts. I'll say it slowly. No senior discounts. That's right. I don't believe in doing it. I don't believe there's any reason to discount for seniors. We already established they have all the money. Now, if you must discount for seniors, if you're going to break my rule, I'm okay with it with a but. And the but is schedule it. There's no reason to do senior haircuts on Thursday afternoons. The shop is hopping and you're jammed. There will be no reason to do senior discount haircuts on a Saturday. You don't have any problem generating traffic. Maybe if you're going to do senior discounts, no senior discounts, you might want to do them early in the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 9 to noon or something like that. Put them at slow times to use them as gap fillers. Put them in the afternoon from noon to 3 when things are quiet, when the lunch crowd dies down, maybe 1.30ish until the after work folks start at about four. But the idea is strategy when it comes to using senior discounts. So they can be a huge market. We do want to talk about how important they are. 
And that's your $100,000 haircutter tip of the day. Our model is here, so we're gonna get ready to introduce, bring Jeremy up here. Uh, Jeremy has been a haircut model for me in the past for some still images when we launched Zootcomb, and we've got rave reviews about the shape of his head and his hair and all that kind of stuff. So we're excited to have him back again today. Um, he's got a great classic tapered haircut, and what we're gonna explore with his haircut today is clipper over comb. Now, I talked to him about setting up the haircut, but I didn't talk to him about out exactly what he wants so you will get an opportunity to observe a portion of the consultation we're just gonna do it live we're gonna do it like we really do it and we're gonna feature some Jatai as well we always do let's take a look at the Jatai products we're gonna talk about There's two tools from the Jatai collection that we're gonna to use today. We're going to use the Japanese handle uh, razor that uses the Jatai Artist Club Series blades. Now this is ProGuard, and you'll notice there's a little bit of Japanese on there, and we've got the new English packaging out uh, not on all the blades. The English packaging is only on some of the blades as we're going forward with it uh, on the external packaging. And I am told, I haven't seen it yet because they're sending me some, but there's also a QR code on the packaging. Give it a little clicky with your phone and you're going to have the opportunity to see um, a bunch of information on blade changing and all those things. So we've got our Artist Club Japanese razor handle. We're gonna use that. We're gonna feature that with ProGuard blades. And I'm gonna talk about why ProGuard is my favorite when we get to that portion of the service. We're also gonna use, and there's no blade in there right now, that's our nape and body. Nape and body is a hot, hot, hot item right now for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is it's a feather item and it's an extraordinarily high quality item. But more importantly, because nape and body, just like ProGuard, opens a door and creates an incredible opportunity for cosmetology professionals to enhance the service that they deliver, deliver an amazing service, and make more money. I'm gonna say it again, make more money. I'm gonna say it one more time, make more money. And the reason making more money is so important is we do have to talk about one other thing. For those of you that follow me in my social spaces, because I'm all, and Jatai just posted in the comments the link to uh, some information on the Artist Club, Club Pro Guard Blades. You can see that come up. I saw it click up here in the comments stream. Please click on that and go explore. When we're done, don't do it now. But when we're done and explore all the great things we have going on. But for those of you that follow me in my social spaces, you know today is June 11 and you know that it was day 11 of the 30 days of June in which we are counting up or counting down. I guess that's how it, we're counting up and down because the days are getting larger from one to two to three, so we're counting up. But we're counting down because there's 30 days till we get to July 1. And July 1 is a special holiday. July 1 is an important holiday for those of us in the Beauty and Barber game. Who knows what July 1 is? I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna wait. I know there's a delay on the comment stream here, but I'm gonna go put my handles back in my tool rack. I'm gonna go put my ProGuard blades away and I'm gonna put my Nape and Body blades away so I can invite Jeremy up here in just a second for a haircut. While I'm doing that, somebody tell me why are we counting up or down to July 1 and why is July 1 so important? Go, 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 come on. I can hear the Jeopardy music in the background. Gittle got it. That's right, Gittle. We are on our way to Raise Your Haircut Prices Day in the USA. That's right. I created this holiday a little over a decade ago. July 1 is Raise Your Haircut Prices Day in the USA. And my mission for this, my vision for this, my goal for this is that beauty and barber professionals all make more money. Pretty simple. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to add value to what we deliver, we're going to add quality to the experience, and we're going to add to the price. We're going to go up 10% and tune in. I'm sharing these and I'll post a few of them in here on the Jatai page. I'm sure Jatai will be happy to have me post some of those links as well. Uh, but I've got a YouTube video every single morning, round about 7 a.m. 
Um, what do I win for being the first? Um, we're going to get you a free bottle of product of some kind. We're going to get you something good. Uh, of course, you got to get a prize, uh, but you shouldn't have to ask for it. We should have thought of that before we said it. But anyways, July 1, Raise Your Haircut Prices Day in the USA. The prices are going up. My job is to help you. One video every morning. Jeremy, come on up. Have a seat here, my friend. How are you? I am delightful. Welcome. Have a seat. All right, Jeremy's not been here to the shop for a haircut. Like I said, he's been a model for some uh, still photos and things in the past. But let's give everybody a quick tour of what Jeremy's got going on. Um, Jeremy's got a good head of mid-color, medium density hair. Kind of wears it in a very traditional parted style. Tapered up the back and side. How long has it been since you had a haircut? Um, I'm going to say maybe four weeks. Five. Four weeks. Is that about normal for you? Yeah. Great. You couldn't ask for a better set of answers right there. Been about four or five weeks, and that's about his normal haircut visit interval. Well, hair grows half an inch a month under almost all human circumstances, so that tells me approximately what this, I mean, I know what the kid looks like, but it's told me what this looked like when it was freshly cut. Are we doing anything different for you today, or are you pretty much staying with this kind of stuff? Yep, staying with the same stuff. Right. And he's home from school, he's got a summer job, he's working hard, he's having fun, but he's still got to look sharp, got to look clean and crisp. His ears are gone, it's hanging over the ears a little bit, sideburns got a little heavy. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to use, we've got a comment or question there? Daniel says she has the best mentor, she ready. She, she ready one, there you go. All right, love those answers. Um, all right, so we're going classic tapered haircut. And on one hand you could say, all right, classic tapered men's haircut, we do a thousand of these. Where can we add some value to this haircut experience? So we're gonna do two things for you tonight. Number one, we're gonna look at what we call the reverse blending concept. Reverse blending is the idea that the toughest part of a haircut like this is the blending. And the greatest amount of time is spent on the blending. So let's reduce the blending. And we're gonna do that instead of our classic taper the back and sides, layer the top and blend it together. We're gonna to layer first, taper second, and we're largely gonna get the blend for free. So number one, we're gonna see a minimized amount of blending by layering first and tapering second. Because when we layer first, if we layer top dead center down around the head form, we cut into or take or cut or layer into the top edge of what is later to become our tapered perimeter. And we eliminate what we call interior contributing weight. I love the way that sounds. It sounds fancy, but it's simple. That's hair on the inside. Remember, parietal ridge, occipital bone, crest line, or widest point of the head. Everything above there is referred to as the interior. Everything below there is referred to as the exterior. Dude doesn't even cut hair, he got it right. Exactly. We're going to layer first, cutting down, intruding into the top edge of what is later to become our tapered perimeter. As long as we cut into a little bit of the exterior from the interior, when we taper up from below, when we run into or intersect with the previously layered interior, by having eliminated the interior contributing weight, boom, you get your taper quicker, better, easier. That much I got you. Next thing we're going to explore is clipper over comb. We're going to break down clipper over comb. We're going to break out our zoot comb. Now Jeremy has seen the zoot comb before because Jeremy was a model on detailing, lining, edging, and trimming when we first shot some video, or still images rather, on the zoot comb. But zoot comb's your go-to tool. And what we're going to demonstrate is we're going to take a really close exploratory look, and his hair's perfect for this, clipper over comb. Clipper over comb. Tapering him up using classic clipper over comb. We're going to talk about the importance of things like how to hold the clipper comb, how to hold the comb at an angle, how to roll the comb till the top of the tips of the teeth are tipped out towards my torso. It's not easy to say, but I get through it every time. Then we're going to roll the comb. We're going to roll the comb till the top of the tips of the teeth are tipped out towards my torso. Because when the top of the tips of the teeth are tipped out towards my torso, we can rock the tapering on this. We're going to drop the camera down a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of coaching coming in from the outside, telling me that they'll see that better if I drop that camera down a little bit. And I think that's the case. We're going to roll the comb so the top of the tips of the teeth are tipped out. That's our tapered motion. Not only are we going to look at clipper over comb, but we're going to break clipper over comb down into a system or an approach called panel cutting. Panel cutting is a system where we subdivide the head into a series of vertical overlapping panels. At the center back of the head, we have something we call panel number one. And we're going to taper panel number one right here. It's about the size of the tooth area of our comb until panel number one is a little finished haircut. Panel number one will then become my 
my model, or we would use the word guide. See, he doesn't know how to cut hair, but he knew exactly what I meant. That's right. Well, panel number one is going to be our guide, and half of panel number one will serve as our guide for panel number two. <laughs> now we got it. When we move on to panel number three, panel number three will be half of panel number four. No, 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 no. One is the guide for two. Two is the guide for three. Three is the guide for. Four. There you go. He knows the numbers. Okay. And we didn't think about it, guys. We didn't practice this. All right. What's that? He was technically right. He was technically right. Yeah. Each panel is the guide for the next successive panel. So that's where that overlap comes in as we work around the head. We'll work center to the back of the ear and center to the back of the ear. Then we'll jump to the areas at the front. You're going to see we're going to get a perfect blend. That's enough setting up the dance. When we are done with that beautiful haircut, we're going to finish him off with a hot lather razor, edge, and clean up, and that's where the tie, pro guard blades, and our handles are gonna come in, so we're gonna see that. Let's get them covered up, let's get them ready to rock. We appreciate him being here tonight. We're gonna boogie through the majority of this haircut, we're gonna break it down, we're gonna let you see what we need to do. Neck strips, because neck strips are the law. We use paper towel on the neck. I want to tuck that in like that. I want to keep the hair on my side of the equation, not down the back of his shirt. We're gonna put a cape on. Chair cloth, if that's what you call it. Got the classic barber stripe chair cloth. Between that and my barber jacket, we're doing a flashback to like 19, what, 53 or something like that. That's awesome. And we've got our zoot comb. We're not shampooing today, we're just gonna dampen him using a water bottle, using our comb. He doesn't have any product in his hair. You got anything in there? Um, no. A little bit of light gel or anything? Okay. Light, light gel. A little bit of light gel. Okay, now. Probably gone by the time. Yeah, by, by you've now. broken it up by now throughout the day. All right, that's the high stress associated with your job, running your hands through your hair, freaking out. All right, let's cut the top. We're gonna to scissor cut a portion of the top to establish a guide. I use the larger portion of my comb with wider teeth, and I think this is so important when top cutting our male clients. I use low tension. When you've got a traditional cutting comb, and I think I have a traditional cutting comb here or something like it. This one's fairly big, but if you look at it, you've got thin, fine teeth and big, wide teeth. Thin, fine teeth, big, wide teeth. The large teeth are for low tension. The finer teeth are for high tension. That's for making hair go where you want it to go. When I designed the zoot comb, I was very specific to be sure that we had wide teeth because I believe the top of men's hair, through the top of a haircut on a guy, you want to cut with wide teeth and you want to cut with low tension. And the reason for that is low tension lets the hair fall and go and do and lay and be where it falls and goes and does and lays and bees on its own. By using a fine tooth comb, you ever heard the expression going through it with a fine tooth comb? Somebody says, I'm going through it with a fine tooth comb. Who says that? Jeremy, who would say something like, I'm going through it with a fine tooth comb? Someone who needs something very precise. Very precise, yeah. Somebody like a police detective or a tax accountant or your mom when she's ransacking your room looking for weed. Yeah, I'm going through it with a fine tooth comb. That's the kind of person that uses an expression like that. Exactly. So we want the hair to be in control. We want the hair to go where the hair goes when the hair goes where it wants. And notice, folks, as I apologize, I'm on the dark side of the moon back there. I'm going to turn him when I get in through that top crown area. He's got a fairly prominent cowlick right there, but I'm not going to be too concerned about getting it too short. Normally, when his hair is freshly cut, he gets a little bit of pop off that cowlick, anyways, but that's not a bad thing. So coming down, and the important thing from what I set out with our plan is that I cut through the top of the head and I make sure that I cut down around the head form far enough, look at my fingers, I'm cutting past the parietal ridge, past the crest line, past the curve of the head, so I intrude into the top edge of what is later to become my tapered perimeter. Cutting from the interior down into the exterior. Bingo. You know, it's always good when the model can help. Okay? It's not just about you sitting here and looking good. There's a little more to it than that. All right, folks, we got the top cut. Fairly simple, layered throughout the top. I cut it one way, I cross-checked it another way. I'm gonna call that classic barbering 101. I like to leave my front edges a little bit longer. I think it gives him a little personality and style. He can pop that up with a little bit of gel. He can wear it a little flatter or a little more conservative if he wants to. And I'll probably also go in there 
I won't say probably, I'll say I'll go in there. I'm going to go in there a little bit with blending shears to take a little bit of weight out of the top. And I can also go in with a classic feather tool. I can go in, of course, freestyle. I can go to my feather freestyle razor. Now you'll notice this is my freestyle razor. And if you look closely, you can see I have my texturizing blade on there. I don't have a traditional hair cutting blade. Based on the configuration of the castellations on the guard, you can see that that is a texturizing blade. Perfect for what we're gonna do here. We're gonna use a technique called razor rotation, where we're gonna literally go in and rotate between the comb and the razor through the top of the head with a very light glossing motion. Can you feel just a little bit of pull on that? Yeah. That little bit of pull is where we're actually doing a little bit of cutting. Now, I can come in underneath the growth direction. And here I want to be careful because the weight of the hair and the fact that it's pushing towards me puts extra pressure on the blade. Now, a common question I get when I'm performing this technique is, how hard are you pushing with the razor? And it's important to acknowledge that when we're doing this with a razor through the top of the head like that, I'm gonna shift my angle here, and I'm gonna move the camera just a little bit to make sure, well, I don't want you to go out of the frame, to make sure that you can see what I did here. I lifted the hair up, and I have the razor turned with the blade facing up and away. And I'm coming in underneath, and you can feel that little bit of pull, right? Yep. You can feel that little bit of pull. Well, that's not coming from pressure. I'm not pushing. I'm letting the, the hair, the weight of the hair come back against the razor. And I am simply regulating the angle. It's going to be all in the angle of the blade. Because if the angle of the blade is more perpendicular to the hair shaft, it won't take much hair. But if I drop the razor down where the angle of the blade comes to a low angle, <clears throat> excuse me, a low angle against the hair shaft, even a dull blade will eat through a whole lot of hair in a hurry. So I don't want to take a lot of hair out. I just want to bust this up because he can be a little heavy on top. And I think we did a great job of doing that just to lighten it and give it a little bit of character. And remember, with the nature of the blade on the texture razor, we're now going in with a texturizing technique, not a length removal technique, to bust that up real nice and soften that up. So we did that through the top. I'm gonna come in here on the light side, and I'm just gonna do it again just a little bit, conscious of angle and position. And on medium to thick and heavy hair, Mid strand to ends, mid strand to ends. Stay away from the base. If you get in too close to the base at the scalp, you're gonna go boop and you're gonna porcupine him. You're gonna get little pieces sticking up and out and through the haircut. It's gonna make him crazy and it's gonna look a little funky, so don't do it. Now we're good. We got a little bit of freestyle feather razor action in through the top for texture purposes. And now we're going to clipper over comb. I'm gonna go to this clipper, only choosing this clipper because it's quiet, and I wanna really put the focus on this, on what I, on me and what I'm doing. But here we go. We're gonna go to clipper over comb. I'm gonna open my blade to the number one position, scooting the cutting blade back, and I'm going to turn on my clipper. I'm gonna go clipper over comb. I want you to hold your clipper comb like you hold a quarter with your thumb and forefinger and put the comb in there like that. Tip the handle in until it bumps your palm and make a fist with three fingers. Now we're going to come in at an angle. Susan, can you read me that question? I can't see the whole thing. I was looking at it. How hard you push through that is also going to be variable based on the texture of the hair and how wet it is too. Too many variables to answer that question with a single answer and that's beautiful. That's a great comment and a great statement, and I totally agree with that, like about 900%. Absolutely, you have to take into consideration the weight of the hair, the density of the hair, the texture of the hair, the hydration level of the hair, even the length of the hair, because the longer it is, the heavier it is, the more it weighs. There's a whole boatload of variables in on that. You are absolutely right. And that comes from experience. So here we go, damp hair, not wet, not dripping, but damp. Thumb and forefinger, hold the comb at an angle, about 20 degrees north of horizontal. Clipper's on and running, it's a quiet clipper. And we're gonna come in and we're gonna taper clipper over comb. And notice I roll the comb till the top of the tips of the teeth are tipped out towards me, and I work my way up the head. I'm working from low to high. And you'll notice as I work up from low to high, down low I hold the comb flatter, up high I begin to rock it out. 
Down low, I hold it flatter, and as I move up the head, I begin to rock it out. It's extremely important. Now, you'll notice, I don't have any real blending there. I'm running up into it, intersecting with the previously layered interior. I'm getting a good blend for nothing. But please notice, I'm holding the comb at an angle. If I hold the comb horizontally, where the hair accumulates in along the base of the teeth at the spine, if I zip that, I'm going to get a heavy step ledge, weight, ridge, weight line, or demarcation. I'm coming in at an angle to do a beautiful taper as I move my way up. Now, you hear that zipping noise? I'm going to be quiet. Listen to the noise. Can you hear that? That zippy, zippy, zippy? That's a technique called picket fencing. What I want to point out is I am not resting the clipper flush with the comb and sliding across. I've tipped it up slightly. I've tipped it up slightly, so I'm contacting the clipper with the top tooth. I call that picket fencing. It sounds like a kid with a bicycle holding a stick, riding along a picket fence with the stick on the fence going brrrr. And the reason I'm doing that's exactly what it sounds like because that's exactly what I'm doing. The reason I'm doing that is by doing that, I can regulate how much hair I take. Notice I'm not cutting all of the hair that's hanging out of the comb. It's a less progressive technique. If I sit flush, I'll take everything. I don't want to take everything. Now look what I've done there. I've got a beautiful little haircut right here in the back, just right here in the back, only right here in the back. Didn't cut hair over here, didn't cut hair over there, didn't cut hair over here, didn't cut hair over there. Just cut hair right here in the middle. And that middle is what we call what? The first, the guide. The panel number one, the guide section. Where did they get the comb? Where do you get the comb? Comb, clipperguide.com. That's my website. That's a zoo item. That's clipperguide.com on the web to get the comb. We're shipping right away. Don't worry about it. We'll get it to you quick. All right. When you're happy with panel number one, and oh, and by the way, check it out. Detailing and trimming on the handle end. Big end for scissor. Big end for clipper. Little end for trimmer. Multifunction. When we're happy with panel number one, only when we're happy with panel number one, do we move on to panel number two? Panel number two is half of panel number three. Nope, one. Oh, Serving yeah. as my guide and half new hair living next door. We're moving around. Half of panel number one. You're, you're, you're on the ball. You're with it. This yeah. is your first haircut in class. I get it. So now we move over. And the cool thing here is, guys, the beauty of panel cutting is every extra second that you spend, every extra moment that you invest in panel number one, will then make panel number two much easier, much quicker, and much faster. Exactly. So if the idea is if you build a better guide, the whole rest of the haircut's a piece of cake and easy. If panel number one's not really sexy and smooth, you're going to have to work a lot harder in subsequent panels. Let me show you. Let me illustrate this. You can see how nice that looks right there. Watch what happens in two. I go to two. Do you see the short guide in the leading edge of the comb and the longer hair over here? Now I have a guide. Before I was building the guide, now I am following the guide. And look how much easier my life is when I simply match to the existing guide. Panel number two's done. Compare that with how much time I spent in panel number one, because I was building my guide. Very little time in panel number two, because I used half of panel number one as my guide. Bingo! Now we move on to panel number three. Panel number three is going to be half of panel number one. No, two. Don't go back to one. One's a guide for two. Two's a guide for three. Three's a guide for four. You got it. All right. See, I knew he'd figure it out. So now we're moving on to panel number three, which is half of panel number Two. You got it. All right, that was a test. I wanted to see if you were going to catch it. He caught it. All right, now we're having, I put a lot of pressure on you here, didn't I? No preparation, no practice, no warning. You thought you were just going to sit here and get a haircut. I there they go. Three's done. We move on to four. Four is half of three. Notice my comb. Real important. By the time I got to panel number four, look at my comb. My comb is practically vertical. In panel number one, I was just north of horizontal by a little. In panel number two, my angle got steeper. In panel number three, my angle got steeper. As I got to the area of the ear in panel number four, my comb was practically vertical. I followed the bone structure. I followed the cranial shape. I followed the curve of the head and we built a beautiful haircut. Now we get to the back of the ear, we stop. We jump to the area directly in front of the ear. Now this area here represents what we call a compound taper. I want to taper up from short to long as I travel along the vertical axis, and when I travel from, and I want to cut from short to long as I travel back along the horizontal axis. So essentially, right here the hair is the shortest. 
It gets longer going up and longer going back. It's as though if you were standing on a cheekbone looking up at an angle, this is going to look like the Lincoln Memorial. It's got steps as far as you can see moving off and away into the future. So we're going to get a gripper. Because for this, I always like to isolate the interior hair with a gripper. I'm going to use it kind of like a comb just to pop this hair up and out and of the way. I'm going to isolate it there with a gripper, and I'm going to come into the corner at an angle. Watch what's going to happen. I'm going to set my comb in at an angle. I'm going to work my way up. And what you'll see here is the beauty of having layered the interior first, because as I come in here and do this, when I run into or intersect with his interior, it's already layered from the work that I did before. Now notice, I flip my zoot comb around and I go to my detailing and trimming comb. I go to my fine end for fine work. Yes, I tweak that up with a trimmer later, but as long as I have the clipper in my hand, as long as I can flip and spin the comb to do that, that's a beautiful thing. Close it up to zero. I call this roughing in the edging. We'll clean up the edging later with a trimmer, but look now how little edging work I have to do. We cut from center back to the back of the ear, from the front hairline to the top of the ear. I have an area right here behind the ear. I need to tie those two sides together. And the beauty of this is clipper on, clipper running, number one blade position. I'm gonna fold the ear down out of the way. I'm gonna insert my comb and roll it back. What do you see? You see two short guides with a long furry thing in the middle. I'm gonna roll it again so you can see it again. Two short guides with a long furry thing in the middle. What do we do? We connect the dots. We simply connect the dots. It was all about creating a guide. Jeremy understood the importance of panel number one serving as a guide with subsequent sections being used as guides for the sections coming after them. In this case, I created two guides and I tied the two together. I need a whack or two to finesse that with a blending scissors. Now, let's show you two techniques. Technique number one, finesse with a blending scissors. I can come in here and smooth that out with a blending scissors. I like to do that, but since we are part of the Jatai family, the question is, Ivan, how would you do that with your freestyle razor? And the answer is, on the surface of the hair, a little bit of hydration for control and client comfort. On dry hair, it'll pull a little bit. I'm gonna go back to my razor rotation technique, and I'm gonna gently smooth that over the surface you feel that little bit of pull when the razor grabs? Absolutely. And just finesse and fine tune that in. And again, it's not about pressure, it's about position. Wait, we're slipping off the camera there. Hang on a second. It's about position of the razor along that hair shaft. Now I can pull the gripper, I got a little bit of isolation, a little bit of disconnection. Man, that's looking good. I'm pleased with that. What do you got? Kittle says two guys, don't cut your guys. Yeah, two guys, don't cut you down, bingo. All right, now we're gonna go back to center back panel number one, and we're gonna go out to panels number two, three, and four on the opposite side of the head. Let's shift up our positioning here just so you can see where we're going. We go back to the middle, back to that, and here. Previously, the guide was in the leading edge of the comb with the longer hair behind it, our hand. Now, the guide is back up at our hand, and the longer hair is in the leading edge of the comb, not a problem, working in straight, vertical, overlapping panels, holding the comb at an angle. Now, I am a right-handed hair cutter. Jeremy's left side is the easy side for me as a right-handed hair cutter. The right side is the difficult side because there's a tendency to want to come in downhill like this, and that's hard to do. We can maybe unload a little bit of bulk. When we get to the back of the ear again, we will stop. I'm gonna to go to the area at the top. Once again, I'm gonna isolate the front fringe with a gripper, just like I did the last time. Pop it up there just so I don't have to fight with it. I'm gonna come in at an angle. I'm gonna taper this front corner. And remember, it tapers out and away and back. So I double lever the comb. I angle the comb this way for tapering, and I angle this way for that front edge taper. Little subtleties that if you were standing here watching me, if I wasn't telling you exactly what I was doing, you might not catch it. But once you know what to look for, boom, you see it every time. Having isolated that fringe just a bit, bring it down just to tweak or fine tune any bit of blending on it. Just like we did last time, I'm gonna close to triple zero. I'm gonna go to my detailing or trimming end of my comb. Notice the light gray color for visibility. Makes it very easy to see what it is we're going after. 
I rough in my edging that I will fine tune in just a minute when I switch to my trimmer. That's your interior layering. That's your classic perimeter tapering using clipper over comb, using panel cutting technique, brush them off, keep them comfortable. Now we go to lining and edging. I'm gonna swap my clipper for a trimmer. I picked up a cordless T-blade trimmer. Now I'm coming in, sideburn. And I'll use my mirror for referencing some of these things to get these things even. I go to my fine tapering end of the tool, taper in that sideburn area. I go stopping top dead center on the ear, back the other way. Notice what I did there when I cut around the ear. I looked at the ear like it was a clock. 12, 6, 9, and 3. I cut from 3 to 12 and 9 to 12, stopping at midnight, top dead center. I didn't overcut the arc and compromise the ear shape back through the opposite side. We'll do the same thing on this side, referencing that other sideburn in the mirror as we cut. And his sideburns get a little sparse pretty quick, and that's okay. Top dead center, stop at 12 o'clock. Comb it up the other way. Fold the ear down out of the way. Now you know, when we come around an ear like this, the last tooth on the trimmer is always wide, thick, fat, smooth, and rounded. Wide, thick, fat, smooth, and rounded. Very few people want to be described as wide, thick, fat, smooth, and rounded, okay? If it's a human, that's an insult. If it's a trimmer blade, it's exactly what we want, right? All right? We set that on the head, and we follow it up around the ear. Neckline, we're gonna come in here. I wanna create a nice, natural taper. Boom, 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 I don't wanna block him. So I'm gonna come up from below and clean up any extraneous hair outside the natural hairline. I'm gonna to go to my detailing, trimming, and finishing end on my comb, and I'm gonna come in at an angle. Now his hair at the perimeter here is very light, yet I can still see it contrasted in my comb. And this is a perfect example. If we took him down to zippy cuts, quickie cuts, down by the corner, they would boom, 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 hit him with a trimmer. We don't wanna do that. We want more of a tapered, barbered look through that neckline. We're gonna deliver a haircut that will look better on him today and every day between now and the next haircut. Notice what I did just there. I turned my comb over because I was seeing the direction of the hair and I was seeing the way the hair was playing out in the comb and the way the hair folds over that way, I don't know if you can see this on camera, I want to make sure you get a better look at it. The way the hair folds over that way, I came back at the hair the other direction with the comb so that I could grab it. That's just going to help me give him a nice finish on the haircut and avoid the temptation to block that line. We are looking good and we're ready to finish. Here's where we get into Jatai world. If you guys are ready for this, here we go. What we're going to do, let's, let's clean them up a little bit. We're gonna open the cape. At this point, what I normally do is I will pull the neck strip, make sure we dust them off, brush them off. These neck dusters are 50 state legal because they are nylon and fully sanitizable. That makes them clean, keeps them clean, keeps them within the letter of the law. Okay? I'm going to put this, I want the paper there. Now, we're going to lather him. I'm not going to lather him right away because I want to install my blades first. We're going to use hot lather around the perimeter. Then we're going to go in, I'm going to do one side with my Japanese handle with my ProGuard blades in my, um, my ProGuard blade in my Japanese style handle. The other side will do with nape and body. So, these blades feature the injector cartridge. Now, you can slide that blade out, and you see that hole in the end of my razor. I put that hole in, slide that a little too far, I'm sorry. I put that hole in my razor handle like that, and actually there's a blade in here already. I forgot that, so I'm gonna take that blade out. I'm gonna get rid of that blade. Blade comes out, where does the blade go? Blade goes in a sharp spin. 
sanitation principles and practices. My friends at Barberside would be proud. We're gonna do what we need to do to take good care of our business and our customers. Jatai makes their little blade disposal containers that come with like the freestyle razor blades. Perfect for this. The little guys like that, they're great. Bigger ones if obviously you're disposing of a lot more blades. But here we go. We're gonna take the blade, we're gonna insert the razor, the little hole right there, and we're gonna slide that blade by pushing, apply pressure to open up the cartridge. I'm sorry, I'm making this clumsier than it really is. Squeeze the blade so it slides in there, and is this on camera right? And then slide that blade into the handle. You don't have to touch it. It's a beautiful thing when you do that like that. And by the way, you also have in the bottom of the cartridges a blade disposal area. You can slide spent blades right into the bottom of the cartridge and they're never coming out of there. So that's like a little sharp pin built in right there. Now, if the blade's not sitting in there straight by pinching the blade, you see that drop like that? I pinched it and the blade dropped in safely and securely in the razor. Now the beauty of ProGuard, the reason I love ProGuard so much is you, and I don't know how well you're gonna see it on camera. Oh, you can see it beautifully. Look at that, you see that micro fine wire that wraps itself over the blade? This is what prevents you from cutting the clients. This is what delivers an amazingly crazy smooth clean shave without the risk of cutting somebody and it opens up the possibility of using this through essentially what is an exception in the law you don't necessarily need a barber license to use a protective blade like a pro guard. So while we're at it, let's change the blade in our other handle. Because once I lather him, the lather will cool, the lather will go away, so I want to be ready. These are quick and easy, simple. ProGuard blades come in the blade tray, you open up the handle, and you simply, like your freestyle haircutting razor, take the blades right out of the tray that way. Literally no touch system. That black button will slide that blade out grab the end of it or just drop it right into. What I do with them is this. I'll open it up like that. I'm gonna throw away a brand new blade. Feather gives me lots of blades. I'm gonna throw away a brand new blade so you can see this. I push the button to slide the blade forward. Then I go to my sharp spin and this hole right here, I'll stick it in there, catching the blade on the corner and it falls in and falls right away and it's gone. That's it. Nobody ever had to touch a blade. Nobody ever had to handle a blade. No risk involved. Safe, clean, and secure. You can do that same thing with the little feather disposal boxes. Once you push it forward so you can grab it, catch it with the edge, and it drops right in. Nice and safe. So let's go back to the tray. We threw away a perfectly, we threw away a perfectly good blade. We're going to pick up a brand new blade. So here's what we're going to do. ProGuard. For our uh, Artist Club razor, nape and body for our nape and body razor. You got a question? Uh, Michelangelo wants to know, are those on the website as well, but I'm not sure what he means. The answer is I have the nape and body blades and the nape and body razors on my website and all of it is available online at jatai.net, jatai.net, that's the Jatai website, everything Feather, everything Jatai, all available there on the website, go there and shop like crazy, they have monthly specials every month, there's great deals on blades and handles and stuff available there, what do you got? Gidel says one of the first and best lessons I ever learned about root direction, you raised my own hairline, respecting the natural root direction, best hair cut of my life. There you go. All right, let's get some hot lather. I'm probably off camera right now. You can hear me, but you can't see me. I take that lather in one hand and I apply it with the other. Hit the two sideburns. How's that feel, nice and warm? Yeah. There you go. Two sideburns and across the nape. It's in one hand applied with the other. I know you guys can't see the back of his neck, but we'll spin it in just one second. Extra lather goes away. Wipe my hands on a towel. Now, when we are working, I'm gonna do this side with my Japanese style, non-folding Japanese handle, Artist Club Pro Guard Razor. First thing we do is we wipe away the shave cream and put it on the paper. Now we get tension up on the skin and we gently take away the hair with the razor. That tension is so important and you don't hack through foam. When you see these Gillette ads with a razor with this guy all foamed up and he's snow plowing through all that foam, that's a no-no. You wanna wipe away, and I'm gonna do it here, you'll see it on this side of the neck. 
You want to use the back side of the razor, or even better is your thumb. Because when you use your thumb, if he's got a mole or a bump or any kind of irregularity in the skin, you'll feel it. And then you take that up, then you come in with the razor, using your thumb to apply pressure to keep the skin taut, and you take it away. Now, I, because I applied the lather, that's my first opportunity to check his neckline. If I feel nothing then, I'm safe to go in with the back of the razor to clean that up. Beautiful. Now we're gonna to go to the other side. I'm gonna spin him, I'm gonna move the camera, because otherwise he's gonna fall off frame there. I'm gonna move the camera, I'm gonna switch razors now. Now I'm going to my artist club. Now, with my artist club, everything is exactly the same. We're on this side of the head, so I'm gonna go with a backhand stroke. I'm gonna peel away the shave cream, I'm gonna come in, tension, and I'm gonna clean away the hair in that area. I'm gonna go back to the back of the razor handle, using that to clear the shave cream, There's tension on the skin, and I'm gonna come in and clean up the neckline. Now, if you are a cosmetologist in Illinois where I live, the state would tell you this is a no-no, that you can't do this, you can't use a razor on skin. And every state is different, so check with your state board. But what I wanna tell you is the exciting thing is, in my state in Illinois, that guarded blade allows a cosmetologist to do that razor or neckline cleanup with lather and that edge. And that's a beautiful thing. First and foremost, because, what do you got? I think he's asking where you get the Sharp, sharp spin, clarify the question. Are you asking where to get a sharp spin? If that's the case, sharp spins are available at almost every pharmacy counter in America. They're very inexpensive. Um, I've had them on my website. I don't have any currently on my website. Um, if you're looking for them, you can't find them. Again, Feather's got the little ones with the, uh, uh, with the freestyle razor blades, we can get you a sharp spin. Uh, message me through the Ask Ivan function at clipperguy.com. I'll hook you up with some sharp spins. I use the towel to remove any excess shave cream from around the neckline and around the client. Then I go to my aftershave. Now, my secret recipe, secret formula, I've been sharing this for years in the business. It's seven to one. Seven parts witch hazel to one part aftershave. I mix it, that's a, a witch hazel bottle. Witch hazel extract is cheap. Witch hazel extract is a natural astringent, natural toner. It's got a little bit of an antiseptic property to it, but it kills the sting and the stink because you're not using straight alcohol-based aftershave. It feels nice and cool and refreshing. We've still got a little bit of classic barbershop fragrance in there because of the uh, aftershave that I mix in, but one part aftershave, seven parts witch hazel is the perfect formulation for that. We go to our neck duster with a little bit of talc. I knock off extra talc against the sink like that. Remember, these are sanitizable, so we're gonna wash it, and we're gonna clean it. And lastly, nothing is done until product is applied. Now, I used hot lather, but I wanna also throw in the idea. You can hot lather him, then remove the hot lather, and then I always like to suggest that you apply a shave cream to shave with that you have available for purchase up front. The Jatai Healthy Luxury Shave products, there's a uh, cleanser, a facial wash, a shave product, and a moisturizer. There's also a beard softener and conditioner, which is a really great item if you got a beard, but you don't, so you know, he doesn't. But to use that shave cream in the shop so they can experience it, so that when we're done, when you take them up front, he says, oh, by the way, do you sell that shave cream? And the answer is, of course we do. So, he's almost done. We get to the product conversation. We always finish product, here with product. Light gel is what you normally use? Yeah. All right, this is Clipper Guy Power Gel. Perfect example of the kind of thing we put in. A little bit of moisture to help it spread through the hair. Jeremy, we're coming up on the end of this here. I want to say to you the same thing I say to everybody when they show up and participate in one of these educational programs. That's a big old thank you for being here, of course. for participating. Um, you learn a little bit along the way. I you got most of the answers right on the first try. Um, that's better than most people do. Oh, that's good. Absolutely. It's amazing what a college education will do for you. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, I'm Ivan Zoot. This is J. 
Jatai Academy, J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web. Uh, once again, we appreciate you tuning in and watching. We went about 50 minutes tonight, so we ran with a nice, long, complete, comprehensive, classic tapered haircut. We saw reverse blending, cut the interior first. We saw panel cutting, a series of vertical overlapping panels, allowing us to blend up to and into our previously layered interior. We saw lather, neck shave, artist club, pro guard blades, nape and body blades, jatai.net on the web for all your ordering, um, clipperguide.com for questions. It says talk to me or ask Ivan, something like that on the website. Click that button. I don't have people. I answer all of my questions myself every night on the web. Send me questions. I'm here to help you. Jatai, as always, is here to help you. $100,000 hair cutter. That's the book in your guide to success and growth in the business. Jeremy, I appreciate you coming in. Thank you so much for being Thank here tonight. You. Don't walk away so you don't trip over the camera on the way out of here. Yeah. You'll get up and leave right after I hit the end button. Sure. And on behalf of Jatai Academy and everybody here, thank you so much for tuning in. Over and out. We'll see you again next time live at Facebook with Jatai. Have a great night.